Rogasa blowing up in size and strength in the Philippine Sea. So 12 hours ago in our last update the storm was barely a tropical storm status at that point. It's now gotten quite a bit better. It's at 15.7 degrees north, 130.5 degrees east. Currently moving towards the Philippine Islands, moving west-northwesterly right now at a fairly slow speed at the moment, 7 kilometers per hour. Estimated wind speeds of 60 miles per hour, around 95 kilometers per, per hour, and a pressure estimate of 988 millibars, which is certainly getting quite a bit deeper uh, quite quickly. That's the latest as of 8 p.m. To, uh, Manila time in the Philippines on September 19th. So a tropical storm still at this point by, by our reckoning, but well on its way to typhoon status as we take a look at that wind field which has expanded since our last update um, and we expect that that trend will continue uh, at least until it gets to major typhoon status. Right now, uh, distances from land 685 kilometers from Catanduanes, 929 from Santa Ana, 955 from Chigugaro, 1028 from Manila, and 1042 from Basco on the Batanas Islands. Interestingly, uh, Basco is now a little bit further away than Manila was compared to the last update because the storm's been moving a little bit further westerly. Uh, however, we still fully expect that the storm will pass between the northern tip of the Philippines uh, and southern Taiwan uh, through the channel and obviously go on to affect those islands in between. Well, we're still expecting the storm to reach at least Category 3 status and possibly Category 4 as it makes that closest approach to the Philippines and Taiwan. With the expected large wind field, dangerous winds are likely to cause damage in some areas accompanied with very heavy rainfall which may cause flooding and that rainfall aspect uh, will be felt far away from the center of the storm on both sides which we'll get to later. So this is the expectation of the storm's track and the wind field over the next seven days or so. There it is, moving northwesterly at first, moving pretty much exactly through the Batanas Islands by the time we enter the new week, and then on towards the coast of China and southern, uh, the southern coast and Hong Kong, and then continuing on westerly towards the Lizhou Peninsula. Uh, latest uh, estimate is that it will weaken very quickly as it gets there. I'm not so sure about that, but that's the projection from the modeling. Uh, but certainly Hong Kong and that whole uh, Guangdong region could receive some really significant typhoon conditions. Well, the estimates are all over the place right now. JTWC only at 45 miles per hour. JMA pretty much have the storm as a typhoon. Pegasa just a little bit above the 60 miles per hour that we're giving it. Satellite estimates from AT ADT only around 43 knots, which is a head scratcher to me. I think the storm looks quite a bit better than that. This is the forecast cone, the latest from Pegasa, um, showing that they now expect the storm to become a super typhoon on approach to those Babian group of islands, which it's actually going to be closer to the center of the storm than the Batanas Islands, according to their forecast. And actually, JTWC is on board with the same thing. They're expecting now a 140 mile per hour peak, which is not quite super typhoon intensity, but still a very strong Category 4 storm, and a landfall there west of Macau as a category 3. Now this is the GFS parent model there calling for the storm to actually be a little bit further north, quite a lot actually there compared to those uh, agency forecasts, pretty much glancing the southern tip of Taiwan and then moving on east of Hong Kong for a landfall there uh, along the southern coast of China. Still is a significant uh, typhoon but probably not a major because of that glancing blow to Taiwan losing a lot of strength. Uh, so I'd say GFS is a northerly um, forecast there uh, compared to other models and those agency forecasts. Uh, still the likely scenario is that it will pass a little bit further south, hold more intensity on its way uh, to the Hong Kong region. Uh, there's the simulated reflectivity showing that the storm holds its core all the way until that final landfall but it does decompose extremely quickly after that uh, landfall and then on through the southern part of China overland for the most part according to that parent model. Interestingly though the ensembles overall have it a little bit further south and that's what we use for uh, that earlier track projection that we showed which took it just along the coast of China. 
So still a significant amount of wriggle room there for the forecast uh, track. This is the rainfall expectation then for the next seven days and you can see if that does transpire just how much of a lashing the mountains of Taiwan will get now. They're expecting 32 inches of rain if this forecast verifies that would be 600 uh, no, it's more than that. 800 millimeters of rainfall. And for parts of the Philippines there as well, western and southern Luzon, possibly getting to 25 inches of rainfall over 600 millimeters, including the Metro Manila area. Uh, some significant uh, populations could get some heavy rainfall. And for Hong Kong, possibly up and above 10 inches of rain there as well, 250 millimeters. Well, sea surface temperatures are obviously very warm across the board in this area. Uh, just a slight bit of cooling from Mitag ahead of um, Ragasa, the other storm that's just made landfall in China. Uh, but overall, those temperatures are really warm at 29 degrees is probably your benchmark minimum um, and we're maybe looking at maximums of about 31 degrees celsius uh, on those sea surface temperatures those temperatures there in fahrenheit reading a little bit low because it measures air temperature well this is the latest satellite imagery right now and the storm was already quite large but is certainly blown up a lot more today into this evening. Uh, what's the most impressive part about how Regassa is looking right now is the extremely high cloud tops that it is producing on the southern side of the center. The northern side still looking a little bit flaky. I imagine there's some possibly dry air up there or maybe a little bit of wind shear um, that has been preventing the northern side from really blossoming as well. But as we now move on to the Forster Team website imagery, which you can take a look at at any time on our website, ForsterT.com, uh, you'll see just south of the center, those cloud tops really bubbling up, the water vapor imagery looking quite impressive as well, and just how chunky all of that convection is too, over a very, very large area. We're probably talking a few hundred miles there uh, from one side to the other, west to east. Look at those colors here. If you are familiar with these color scales, that is minus 90s there in the yellow, and this is the rain rainbow imagery which makes it look a lot more bleaker um, certainly a lot more impressive there on that kind of imagery and then I think next up is the Zare imagery which will show you um, just exactly what those temperatures are into the mid minus 90s in quite a few spots which I think is really impressive when I first saw that today um, certainly took me by a little bit of surprise there's the wide shot showing all three storms active right now. Mitag is now inland, Regassa there in the middle, and on the right-hand side, the far right there, it is Neoguri moving towards the west-northwest as well, it should be recurving. And this is a close-up for the Philippine sector, uh, showing those two storms now. Mitag moving inland. Um, it was relatively weak, uh, but still around 50 miles per hour at landfall. It is now weakening fairly quickly. And of course, Regassa is well and truly on its way up. Around the world, we've got a 50% chance of development in the Eastern Pacific right now. Disturbance I-9 doesn't have much time left though. Tropical Storm Gabrielle, which is holding on to that little bit of convection it's managed to find. Uh, actually not doing quite so badly, it should be intensifying soon. And of course the Western Pacific picture with these three storms populating the basin. It's been the busiest time we've had for a little while.